Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. If you've tuned into some of our recent videos, you might be aware that we recently passed 100,000 subscribers on the channel. To celebrate this mind-blowing milestone, we wanted to do something special. And last week, we asked you for suggestions of cases that you wanted to see covered. Thanks so much to everyone who took the time to respond. As usual, you all came out in full force with great suggestions. Today, we're going to be taking a look at two of the cases randomly selected from that list. Be sure to let us know what you think, and if you want us to continue covering more suggestions over the next couple of weeks. Before we get to the video, we just wanted to thank all of you once again for your support. We really could not have gotten here without you, and we're totally overwhelmed and appreciative to have reached such an amazing milestone. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the first of today's cases. Be sure to look out for a link to the second video in the description below. In the summer of 2015, Patsy Hudson was living a quiet life in Mansfield, Ohio. The 62-year-old lived alone in a modest house on Spring Street, and aside from the odd visit from family members, mostly kept to herself. Despite her reclusive nature, Patsy was known as a big-hearted woman who wasn't afraid to help others. However, most of her time was spent tending to the neighborhood's stray cats, many of whom she took into her home to care for. On the intermittent occasions that she was spotted outside the house, she could even sometimes be seen walking some of these cats around in a baby stroller that she had for them. However, in the middle of that summer, Neighbors and family members of Patsy's began to notice something strange. Even for a woman who liked her privacy, she hadn't been seen in quite some time. In fact, no one seemed to be able to get in contact with her. One of the neighbors to notice Patsy's absence was a man named Wayne Liggett, who saw that the gate to her property was open and that her mailbox appeared to be overflowing. Others heard rumors that she had traveled to Florida to visit friends and family. Patsy's son, Lonnie Clevenger, was used to not seeing or hearing from his mother for extended periods of time because of his job as a truck driver, but by August, even he was concerned enough to visit her house. When he did so, he couldn't get an answer at the door, but saw that the TV was on and that both the Patsy's vehicles were parked outside. According to Lonnie, it wasn't all that unusual for his mother not to answer the door or even the phone if she was watching TV and he didn't want to break in to check on her because he had previously done so once before and it had made her upset. Though not getting an answer at the front door wasn't all that unusual, what was strange to Patsy's family members was the idea that she would leave her home for an extended period of time without letting them know. As months passed with no further contact and with visits to the house still going unanswered, it only made them more concerned. Finally, on December 22, 2015, Patsy's sister Patricia reported her missing. She had stopped by at her Spring Street residence to drop off a Christmas present from their mother, and again, had received no answer. Police conducted a search of Patsy's residence, but could find no trace of her or her cats. It seemed that she had simply vanished. In the middle of January of 2016, Mansfield police issued a news release seeking assistance in locating Patsy. Few details were included in the release other than her identifying information, but it did note that Patsy had last been seen on July 4th. Less than a month later in early February, more information was given to the public about this last reported face-to-face -face encounter. It turned out that Patsy had been involved in a dispute with her next-door neighbors concerning her cats around this time which had led to her filing a police report. According to Patsy, one of her cats had been poisoned and another had been killed. The neighbors involved in the dispute were identified as a couple, a 53-year-old man named Walter Renz and his girlfriend, known only by the name Kara. Curiously, they hadn't been seen since early July either. Relatives of Walter Renz said that they were baffled both by his disappearance and Patsy's. Walter had moved into the home next door to her just a few months earlier. It was a rental property owned by his cousin Dwight Wallen. 
When interviewed by police, Wallen told them that he had allowed Renz and his girlfriend to live there because Renz was homeless and unemployed. Wallen also told authorities that he knew that the relationship between Renz, his girlfriend, and Patsy had been somewhat rocky. At times, they got along well, but there had also been a couple of ugly feuds between them. Renz had done odd jobs for Patsy at her home, but there had been a dispute over payment. Wallen had also stepped in and purchased a blue Ford camper van for his cousin after an agreement to buy one of Patsy's vehicles had similarly ended in an argument when she reportedly raised the price on him. Wallen said Renz gave him no advance notice that he would be leaving the Spring Street residence. After driving by a few times in late summer and noticing that the vehicle that he had purchased for him was gone, he went inside to find that all of Renz and his girlfriend's belongings had been cleaned out and the key to the house had been left on a table. Renz's mother, Virginia, was also interviewed by police, though the details she provided were largely focused on the mystery woman known as Kara that he had last been seen with. Virginia told authorities that she knew very little about the woman, but was fairly certain Kara was not her real name. She said that the woman and her son had met online several years ago, and that she had been suspicious of her for some time. On one occasion, she reportedly took Kara to a Mansfield hospital and found out that she had no social security number or birth certificate. Kara allegedly told Virginia that she was lacking the documents because she was born on a Native American reservation. At the same time that these details were reported, police also announced a series of suspicious details regarding Patsy Hudson's disappearance. It turned out that her social security checks were still going into her Chase bank account, and that withdrawals had been made from that account in various locations across the country. In fact, over $4,000 worth of debit and credit card charges had been made in the months since Patsy's disappearance, in states as far west as Montana and Wyoming, and as far south as Mississippi. This was despite the fact that Patsy's mail had not been forwarded or stopped, and she had not paid a city water or sewer bill since June of 2015. Aside from an electricity bill that was set up for automatic payments, there was only one bill that Patsy still seemed to be paying on time, a Verizon cell phone bill. There was just one problem. Patsy never had a cell phone. Needless to say, investigators were eager to speak to her former neighbors about her disappearance. Just days after this flurry of revelations was made, the public received another update. Walter Renz and his girlfriend had been arrested. The girlfriend was finally identified as 57-year-old Linda Buckner, a woman with many aliases who had active warrants for her arrest out in Kentucky and who had been evading law enforcement for some time. Renz and Buckner were captured by federal agents from a U.S. Marshals Task Force on February 4, 2016. They were found at a roadside campground in Lewis County, Tennessee. Renz was held on a charge of receiving stolen property, while Buckner was held on one of the warrants she had in Kentucky. A few days after the arrests of Renz and Buckner, another chilling announcement was made. Police had found human remains in several places in northern Richland County, just a few miles outside of Mansfield. It would take three months for any updates to be given regarding these remains, but finally, on May 10th, the public received the grim news they had been confirmed as those of Patsy Hudson. According to reports, following his arrest, Walter Renz had led police to seven different sites where partial skeletal remains were found, among them a pelvis, cranium, an upper arm, and two lower leg bones. DNA testing on the bones was able to confirm that they had all come from Patsy Hudson. However, due to the fact that only a small portion of the total remains were recovered, no official cause of death could be determined. Authorities theorized that the death had resulted from some sort of injury to the neck, either from a knife or from strangulation. At a press conference, prosecutor Bambi Couch Page said that Patsy's death was amongst the worst crimes that she had ever seen, and that Patsy had been violently killed, dismembered, and discarded. At the same time that these details were released, Prosecutors also announced a slew of new charges against Renz and Buckner, including aggravated murder, tampering with evidence, abuse of a corpse, and misuse of a credit card. 
Both would go on to plead not guilty to all of the charges and would have their bond set at $250,000. Though both received speedy trial dates, these proceedings were postponed after lawyers in both cases intervened. Buckner's lawyers argued that they needed more time to prepare for her trial due to the complexity of the charges against her, while Renz's lawyer entered an insanity plea on his behalf. In October of 2016, Renz was found unfit to stand trial, and the proceedings against him were put on hold indefinitely while he underwent treatment to, quote, see if he could be restored to competency. On November 17th, Linda Buckner became the first of the two defendants to go on trial for the murder of Patsy Hudson. Her defense strategy was simple. Renz was apparently to blame for everything involving Patsy's murder and disposal, while she had simply used the dead woman's credit card. The defense further claimed that Buckner hadn't actually even been in the state when the murder occurred, and that she had only found out about it later. Prosecutors, meanwhile, argued that the couple had both been in on the crime together, and that the motive had been financial gain. In order to push back on the claims that Buckner wasn't in the state, they provided statements from several different witnesses who said that they had seen Buckner, Renz, and Patsy arguing on the day before she made the call to police about the alleged poisoning of her cats. Patsy's son, Lonnie, also testified that when he called his mother's house around this time, an unknown person had answered, and it had been a woman. On the last day of the trial on November 29th, Buckner took to the witness stand for nearly three hours, saying that she had nothing to do with the 62-year-old's death. She said that she had arrived at the house after the crime had been committed and found Patsy dead in the bathtub, presumably from a wound to the neck. This seemed to not only contradict statements that had been made earlier during the trial, but also did not match what Buckner had told police during her interviews with them. During questioning, she had never said anything about a neck injury and had previously stated that neither she nor Renz had harmed Patsy. Prosecutors argued that Buckner was lying then and she was still lying now, and that the evidence pointed to her involvement. On November 30th, a jury agreed, convicting Linda Buckner on all charges. She was subsequently sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Though the news was a relief to Patsy's family, they felt that with Renge's trial still in limbo, they were not able to fully get closure. In an interview, Lonnie Clevenger told media, We've still got one to go. That would put the icing on the cake. The news that they had been waiting for finally came a few months later, when Walter Renz was declared mentally competent, and his trial began in April of 2017. During the proceedings, it quickly became clear that Renz planned to pursue a similar strategy to Buckner, insisting that she was the mastermind behind the whole thing, and that he was mostly an unwilling accomplice. In Renz's version of the story, the crime happened during an argument between Patsy and Buckner. After Patsy was dead, Buckner had forced him to participate. According to him, Buckner didn't want to call the police because of the warrant out for her arrest in Kentucky, and said that she would get him sent to jail for something that he didn't do if he refused to help dispose of Patsy's body. Renz claimed that he was afraid of Buckner, so he complied. However, witnesses told a different story. One witness testified that they had seen a man letting cats out of a van in a rural part of Richland County just days after Patsy was last seen alive. The man was driving the same kind of blue Ford camper van that Renz was known to have. Prosecutors alleged that Renz had let the cats go so that they would not be found at Patsy's house when police searched, making it look like she had plausibly left of her own accord and taken her pets with her. Still more chilling testimony came from a woman named Kiki Cooper. Cooper testified that she had met Renz and Buckner at an RV park in Mississippi in December of 2015, a few months after they had already been on the run. Cooper said that the couple looked extremely dysfunctional and that they were dirty and nervous looking when they arrived. Still, out of a sense of community, she spoke to them and got to know them a little bit. Cooper said that just a couple days after coming to the RV park, Renz had mentioned to her that he was glad that he liked his new neighbors because he had had to kill the last one. She said that Buckner had hit Renz in the arm when he said this. Furthermore, Cooper stated that when the couple had left the RV park, they had asked her to look out for their mail, 
particularly for a bank card that was supposed to be coming their way. She said that Linda Buckner called her every day until the bank card arrived, after which the couple hastily showed back up to collect it. Cooper alleged that Buckner and Renz had given her a bag of cheeseburgers as a thank you, which she did not eat because she feared that the couple might be trying to poison her in case they believed that she knew too much. She said she gave the food to some others who said that they didn't care that it was potentially tainted, and that afterwards those people had fallen ill. Like Buckner, Renz eventually took the witness stand in his own defense. Prosecutors used it as an opportunity to question him about a letter he had written to his mother, where he had seemingly confessed to his responsibility for Patsy's murder. Not only did he contradict earlier statements about not being involved in Patsy's dismemberment, in part of the letter, he also seemed to bizarrely confess to her murder. He claimed that he had spoken a word in a Native American language and that this had killed her, saying, quote, I spoke one word and she died. Just like with Linda Buckner, at the end of his trial, Walter Renz was convicted on all charges, and on April 24, 2017, he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. With the final perpetrator behind bars, Patsy Hudson's family was finally able to properly grieve her loss. At Renz's sentencing, many spoke about what a kind-hearted person Patsy had been, and about how she hadn't deserved the brutality of the crime that had taken her life. In a somber and scathing condemnation, Judge James DeWeese summed up the horrible crime by pointing out how Renz and Buckner had sown the seeds of their own downfall. If you hadn't used their debit card, you probably never would have been caught, he said. Thank goodness for your greed. Do you know of any other cases like this that you think we should check out? Tell us about them in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.